Now that we've got some fundamentals taken care of, let's take a look at some more sophisticated tokenomics. Previously, we learned how to create a basic token from a mix and start transacting it using Brownie. Now let's pretend that we want to make our token a bit more sophisticated. There's a lot of great DeFi sites. So what if our token automatically invests and earns yield, making it something like a yield bearing token? For this tutorial, we're gonna get started by showing how to perform basic integration with Curve Finance shown here, the king of DeFi. Curve has an incredible empire with at this point now hundreds upon hundreds of smart contracts. Now, how could we interact with these contracts using Remix? You really can't. They aren't deployed to any test nets. So for this reason, we're gonna be using what's called a forked mainnet. A forked mainnet takes a live snapshot of the Ethereum blockchain and allows you to interact with it directly from your local test net. It's very cool and you can do things like unlock wallets or see how your contract might respond. Some quick set of notes. Before we get going, we're going to need to create a key with Infura. Infura is a service that's gonna manage our blockchain forked environment. I'm not gonna show my key here for obvious reasons, but you can get started by setting it as an environment variable just by typing export web3 underscore infura underscore project underscore id equal to your key. And that's all capital letters. We're also going to need to install Brownie Token Tester. Brownie Token Tester makes it even easier to work with tokens in a mainnet fork. And since we previously installed pipx, we can add this to our Brownie environment very easily. All we need to do is type pipx inject f brownie brownie token tester and this will go ahead and install just like that brownie is so good all right now let's got that out of the way let's create a new script call it stake.py this will be responsible for staking any money into F. First, we're going to need to import some libraries. Brownie will simply need contract to interact with contracts and accounts, which is the basic accounts that are created. Whenever you spin up a new Ganesh instance, it pre-funds 10 accounts. You have the private keys, you have everything. And from Brownie tokens, we're going to want mintable fork token. We'll talk a bit more about mintable fork token in a second. We're going to start with main. As we saw previously, when you're writing a script, it's going to by default look for what's in main. A little bit more housekeeping. Let's create some addresses that we're going to need to interact. We'll need an address for DAI. We're going to pretend that the people have paid us a handsome sum in DAI. So we'll go on the Etherscan page, copy the DAI contract address. And let's assume our contract is also going to accept people paying in USDC. So let's swipe the USDC address. And finally, the third contract that exists ex currently on the blockchain that we'd like to interact with is registry. This is the curve registry. Curve registry is great. With the curve registry, you can basically find any pool and interact with it directly. So it stays up to date as they add new pools. And you can also perform a lot of transactions directly through the registry. The address of the curve registry I've found to be here. And that's all the housekeeping that we need. So let's assume people are paying us for a token using stable coins, DAI or USDC. If somebody gives us $100,000, I is 18 decimal places, so $100,000. If we're trying to do this on the main blockchain, it's going to be really expensive. We're going to need to have somebody, wealthy benefactor, give us $100,000 to test with. It's a lot simpler in a forked test net because you have the mintable forked token. Mintable fork token is basically a contract that works the exact same as DAI, except there's a couple of special properties, one of which is mint for testing. We'll apply this to accounts zero, and we will give them $100,000. Not bad, just that easy to have test money to play with. 
registry is also easy to import. We're going to create a contract object on the registry address. And we are going to look for a pool that's going to accept movement between DAI and USDC. In this case, we will look at so the registry. There's a few functions that help you find pools. We're going to look at the find pool for coins function. Where you're going to pass it a from and a to address. This will return an address, so we'll just pass this address into a new contract. Looking pretty good. The only two steps left to make this work is now that we have all the variables in place is to actually run the transaction. This takes place in two parts. We saw previously you always need to approve on the ERC20 token first. So we're going to approve the pool address to withdraw up to the amount. And we're signing this from accounts zero. And then the pool will call the add liquidity function. The pool is going to accept because it's the three pool, uh, which happens to have three coins. We can show you separately how you can pull that from the registry. Um, this case, we know that the first coin happens to be our die, second USDC, third tether. So we're passing three items in the list, the first being the amount of die. And finally, the second argument is going to be the minimum amount we want. So we'll take anything over zero. And finally, we're gonna sign this from our account. So if this works, then over here we can type I'll do it. I'll do it in the big window. Create brownie console, and you have to pass the network mainnet fork, which is going to boot this up. Just within a couple of seconds, we have an environment that's ready to play with the live Ethereum blockchain. Pretty cool. Let's run our script, which we call stake, and if all goes well, we should see three transactions go through. <laughs> it's lunchtime. I got the wrong kind of steak on the brain. One, two, and three. So we now have a history of three transactions. The final transaction of which is going to be the approval and the actual transfer of die stablecoin to three pool. All trace on it's going to show us some more information about the gas. Very easy to get money into Curve, but we're not quite done yet. We have staked into Curve. Next unit, we're going to show you how you can take money that you've staked in the Curve pool, but also stake it into their rewards gauge. So you can earn a bit more money, a bit more bang for your buck. Thank you for checking out this unit. We are excited that you can take this simple script, check out our GitHub to interact with it. Leave us questions in the comments. We look forward to hearing from you.